AI is making you a terrible developer and indie hacking is making you a terrible business person. Well, we'll talk about the indie hacking later, but I really want to talk about AI making us terrible developers. Now, this is a problem. There is a solution and I will share it at the very end. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about the problem. Now, one thing that I think we can all come into, into agreement with is that the models keep on getting better. Now, a lot of people have a dispute on at what rate the models will be getting better. Is it more linear or is it going to blast up and then plateau or are we going exponential? And whatever you know side you're on or you lean, at the end of the day, the consensus is these models are going to be getting better. Claude, GBT, Gemini, and whatever other model exists. And in conjunction to the models getting better, that means the coding tools are going to get better. Windsurf, Cursor, uh, V0, Bolt.new, all these tools that are using these AI models under the hood are going to be getting better. And now the reason why, you know, if you're not familiar, the reason why us developers, my, I myself as a developer use these AI models is they allow me to move fast, build fast. They make researching much easier. I remember a time where you'd have to spend a good chunk of time Googling, keywording uh, on Stack Overflow, trying to get your answer. And then they do tasks that us as developers don't want to do, like writing comments, cleaning up code, refactoring, mobile optimizing. And... If someone says to me that, oh, these models are actually not that good when it comes to helping you move and build faster, the only thing I would say is you're probably terrible at prompting, right? I believe that I've got to a point where I can prompt these models so well that I can build full applications just by prompting. And I've done that before. But here is the problem. Here is the issue. I realized when I was doing this, and primarily I did this to move a lot faster, to get projects done, freelance work done. And it works. And obviously, uh, there, there's human input, right? But one thing I realized is I was robbing myself of learning, especially when I was doing this for my side projects, right? It's one thing to do it for your freelancing work, contract work, or like even at work if they allow you to use AI models. Um, but it's another thing when you're using it for your side projects. And I started doing that. And I realized using Claude, using all these models, these tools, and you know, reaching the end goal is cool, but if you're not a senior engineer, you you rob yourself of a learning experience that comes from learning from your mistakes, learning from bad code and then reviewing it and fixing it, learning from practicing, right? And I, I want to make this clear that what I'm saying doesn't, uh, what, I'm, what I'm not saying is, oh, don't ever use the tools like stop AI, ban it, cancel. That's not what I'm saying. And also what I'm saying does not apply to senior engineers, right? If you are a fan of Web Dev Cody like I am, and you're subscribed to his channel, I remember him talking about how when people complain about using AI models, he doesn't really care. And Cody, if I'm misquoting you, correct me in the comments. And the reason being is he just wants to build products that end users will enjoy. And the reason why he can say that is because he's a senior engineer. He's been in the game for 10 plus years. You and I have not been in that in the game that long. That being said, although these AI models are great, I believe, and even for myself, I went on a two week spree of just crushing you with these AI models. I felt like I was robbing myself of a learning experience, right? Learning, practicing, building myself, you know, allowing myself to fail forward and learn from it. And here's the thing, you can still use these models in a way that allows you to move fast, but you're also in the front seat, especially when it comes to being a developer, right? Like if you use V0 for like maybe some front end for a custom component for some nice animation, that's cool. But at the end of the day, if you're starting to solely rely on the models and you can't raw dog VS code, you are robbing yourself of a learning experience. That being said, how do we solve this? And the reason why I, I, I ask this question is because these models are not going to go away. And if you and I don't adapt to using these models, learning these models, you, we're going to get smoked, right? Because a 10x engineer with AI models will be a 100x engineer, but a 10x engineer without AI models is just going to be a 10x engineer. So we have to incorporate these models in our day to day. We have to practice using these models, learn these models. But from a developer standpoint, how do I keep getting better as these models are getting better, right? As more abstraction is just being added. And I have a solution for this. The solution is build projects without AI, right? For example, I have, uh, oops, didn't mean to say this. I have 
a product that I'm working on and it's completely open source. You can look at the code and it's Goshen Pay Next.js and Goshen Pay Backend. And basically what this is, I'm building a payments service for churches in Canada. Um, and I've just been using VS Code and it's been great. So I highly encourage you that have projects that you're building um, for the sake of learning, build it without using AI. VS Code, no cursor, no windsurf, no bolt. I'm not saying don't use these tools ever. What I'm saying though, keep in mind that as these tools get better and better, make sure that you are also learning and being a better developer. So one thing I would do is I would build projects without AI, right? And if you want to incorporate AI, even in your project building, high level questions. How should I, what tools should I use? What DB should I use? How should I architect this project, right? These are great things to, to prompt these AI models because they'll, they'll teach you, draw diagrams and all this stuff. But the most important thing, aside from building projects without AI, is to consistently sharpen your skills. One of the ways I consistently sharpen my skills is by using today's sponsor, Scrimba. Now, Scrimba is one of those platforms, those learning platforms for developers that's just different. And the reason why I say it's just different, I'm currently taking the advanced JavaScript course because I want to sharpen my JavaScript skills. Uh, I realized, you know, sometimes as JS developers, you write so much JSX that you forget JavaScript. So I started to go through the advanced JavaScript course. And this is why Scrimba is different. I can play Let's the video. Have a challenge with pro so I just muted the video. You could see the video running, but the video is also an editor. So I can click on the code and write on the editor. So, and, and the reason why I bring this up is a company that's building uh, a learning platform this amazing is serious about the education that they're sharing. And Percy, from my experience, this has been a great platform. I'm taking the advanced JavaScript course and the AI engineer path. And I bring this up because we live in a world where, again, I'm going to bring you back to this chart. The models are going to get better. The coding tools are going to get better. And we're going to have to adapt to using these tools, whether you like it or not. But that doesn't mean as developers, we are to solely rely on them and we are to not develop and build our skills. So what do I do? How do I solve making sure that I don't become completely reliant on these tools? I build projects without AI. I consistently sharpen my skills. And one of the ways I do that is with Scrimba. If you want to check out Scrimba, the link is in the description below. They have a link down below and it's going to get you a discount. I told them that I need to hook up my audience. That being said, guys, AI tools are great. Bolt is great. V0 is great. Claude is great. All these tools, Windsurf is great. Cursor is great. All these tools are great. But if you want to be a great developer, like I want to be, if you want to be an excellent developer, like I want to be, I believe in being excellent in all that you do, right? I want to be excellent in every aspect of my life. That one of them being, being a developer, being an engineer. You got to sharpen your skills. You got to build stuff without AI. You have to just raw dog VS code. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I want us to be great developers. That's why I started the YouTube channel. I hope I've encouraged you. I hope I'm helping. And don't get it twisted. I'm going to drop videos using the latest and greatest AI tools because I believe that they're important. Best believe I'm also going to be learning and sharpening my skills because I have a goal of being a great developer. And I know you do too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.